women are still chronically underrepresented in U.S. politics at both a local and national level. The 114th Congress, which convenes this week, will contain a record number of women, but the numbers are still low, especially considering a majority of voters, all voters, are women. Women will make up 20 out of 100 senators and 84 out of 435 House members. At a local level, just 11 of the 50 biggest cities in the country have a woman mayor. Six have a female police chief or commissioner, and 12 have a female chancellor or school superintendent. But there's one city where those three top jobs will be filled by women for the next year. And that city is Washington, D.C. I'm pleased to be joined by the three powerful women who run the nation's capital, Mayor Muriel Bowser, Police Chief Kathy Lanier, and Kaya Henderson, Chancellor of D.C. Public Schools. And full disclosure, my wife worked as a paid advisor to Muriel Bowser's mayoral campaign in 2014. Uh, Madam Mayor, congratulations. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, it was a wonderful inauguration that uh, a lot of folks in Washington started. So you start off, first of all, let's talk about this uh, unique aspect of Washington, D.C. What does it say? Well, how fitting for the nation's capital uh, to have three women in charge, women who have gotten things done in this city um, for years. And we're going to continue to focus on moving our city forward. Washington has come a long way. Um, we've improved our schools, driven down crime. And we want the whole world to know that we are a city on the move. Let's start with the challenges you have. You have a unique challenge in that uh, you've got to deal with Congress yes. uh, as, as part of your, uh, as part of, they, they control some of your funds. You're going to face a budget shortfall, something yes. you addressed in your inauguration speech. What do you need from Congress? Do you need more money from the federal government? Uh, well, we're a city and a county and a state all at once, and right. we do have a unique relationship with the Congress. And we're looking forward to working with the new Congress and are, are optimistic about those relationships. Um, so we need the Congress to focus on the big issues of our nation, immigration reform and working together and getting things done at the Hill. We're actually getting things done for our city just fine, governing ourselves. I understand that, but you have this budget shortfall. Who, where's the money come from? Uh, we're going to look closely at, at our budget and we balanced it for the last 17 years mm -hmm. and we're going to balance it again. We'll make those decisions and we'll send up a balanced budget to the Congress. Um, and all they really need to do is keep it clean. Uh, no riders. <laughs> right. uh, no but they that never do that. They do sort of make some, you know, when it's schools or in uh, social issues like abortion or, or, or marijuana. Yes. And our focus is working with our Congresswoman right. and working with all of the members who care about the District of Columbia is that we're going to we're going to send them a balanced budget um, and, and ask them to to respect the will of the people of the District of One Columbia. One more question for you before I bring in, uh, bring in um, the Chancellor and the Chief, uh, which is the marijuana initiative yep. passed uh, by uh, voters in Washington, D.C. Congress basically said no. Uh, they're going to allow the decriminalization, but they said no to the legalization of recreational use. They said no federal funds, nor local fees could be used. Are you going to challenge Congress on that? Well, we want to respect the will of the D.C. voters, and we think that um, Initiative 71 is self-enacting. Um, mm -hmm. Our legislator is going to send it up to the Congress um, in January. The bottom line for us is that we have to have laws that are clear and enforceable, um, and we have to have regulations in place. Are you going to sue place. Congress over this? Uh, we want to work with our Congress, and we want uh, the will of the, the residents of D.C. to be enforced. Have you ruled out a lawsuit? Uh, we're, we're going to explore every option okay. um, to, to get our law enforced so that the chief also um, can have uh, can be very clear with the officers of what's legal in right. the district and what is it. Chancellor uh, Henderson, uh, Chief Lanier, let me bring you guys in. Chief, let me go back to the uniqueness of, of the fact that three women are running these three. You probably have the toughest uh, aspect of this of a woman in leadership role, majority men on the force. Um, what's, why have you succeeded in, in this seven years now uh, as chief? Well, you know, I don't think your gender really matters in, in this line of work. Like most uniformed services, if you come to work and work hard every day and you have, you know, a reputation for being a hard worker, cops really don't care if you're male or female or black or white, or, and nor does the community. Um, I've been here 24 years. Um, I love the city and I love my police department, so I really haven't had any issues. Well, all right, let's talk about the challenges, though, that both of you are going to face. Uh, Chancellor Henderson. Uh, school reform in D.C. has been an issue for as long as I've lived uh, in the air metro area, 25 years now. Your predecessor, Michelle Ree, was certainly somebody who got a lot of attention for some of the reforms uh, that she did. Uh, this is brought up all the time, how much per pupil the district spends, and yet the reforms are slow. Well, what, do you, what, what do you say to that? I say 
Um, I, I think that's actually incorrect. If you ask the U.S. Secretary of Education, he'd tell you that D.C. is the fastest improving urban school district in the country. Mm -hmm. Now, we had a lot of work to do to kind of break down some things and to rebuild some mm -hmm. things, but student satisfaction is at an all-time high. Our test scores are rising more rapidly than other places. We have satisfied teachers, and most importantly, families are choosing DCPS after 40 years of decline. I was just going to say, if there were more Washington, D.C. residents who sent their kids to public schools rather than private schools, particularly in the, in the wealthier areas, do you think D.C. public schools would uh, have more attention? Well, I think, I actually think we're getting attention because for the third year in a row now, we've seen radical increases in the number of kids coming. Families are coming back from private schools, from charter okay. schools to DCPS. People want, are demanding good neighborhood right. schools, and the only time that public school systems are great is when the community demands it and the government works with the community to deliver. Chief Lanier, uh, obviously the, the focus on Ferguson, the focus on what happened in Staten Island, it's a challenge to a lot of police forces. Uh, you haven't had these issues in your police force. Why do you think that? I think it's uh, really about building those strong relationships with the community. You have to do it every single day. You can't do it in crisis. You do it every day. The community trusts and, and supports you. And during these protests here, I had the good fortune of observing our community, reaching out and hugging police officers and shaking our hand. And uh, we're very fortunate. I can't let you go, uh, Madam Mayor, without asking about D.C. statehood. Absolutely. How much of a priority, and would you accept separate statehood, or would you accept going, being part of Maryland? Somewhere? We are Washington, D.C., Chuck. Um, the residents of Washington, D.C. Yeah. deserve full democracy and statehood. Just but you like could get that connected to Maryland, just, could you not, or Virginia? We are Washington, D.C., Chuck. <laughs> um, and the residents of the District of Columbia um, really want to forge a new path towards statehood. Um, and we can start with budget autonomy, unhooking our, our government from the federal government. And we so, wouldn't be talking about lawsuits about Maryland. We wouldn't be talking yeah. about lawsuits or shutting down yeah. the government when the when the Congress can't figure it out. So we're going to set a pragmatic way to amp up our federal presence and forge a new path. Well, a lot of people want to know how Washington would change if women were in charge. Well, it's already happening in Washington, D.C. Thank you all for coming on Meet the Press. Thank you, Thank you Chuck.